okay so maybe we can start uh, who joined with name participant Uh, I think uh, uh, one of it is me, Rohit. Rohit, okay, okay, Rohit. I don't know why it is showing participant. No, no problem. <laughs> Maybe uh, okay. yeah, it's taking by default or something. No problem. Okay. Okay. So uh, I think there are still some guys who are not joined, but we will not wait. Already we are delayed by ten minutes. Okay. So just a quick recap of what we. Uh, what we had done in our last session and then we will proceed from there Okay, so if you remember uh, we talked about four different scenarios during the revenue recognition Okay, the first Scenario is straightforward when you create a billing document system should be able to recognize the revenue Then and there itself which means there is no revenue recognition setting required for this first scenario no, sorry not for the first scenario the fourth scenario, right? Which means the revenue will be booked at the time of billing and then we discussed about this three scenarios where The revenue recognition is not done at the time of billing so either the billing is done first or the revenue recognition is done first so whenever We are doing the billing first and then the revenue recognition the amount will go to deferred revenue because till the time that revenue is not recognized it will go and sit in this particular gl account deferred revenue account okay and the two scenarios which are applicable for deferred revenue is one is with billing cycle and second is without billing cycle when we say without billing cycle, there is only one billing created. Okay, only the single bill will be created at the beginning of the contract. Okay, so let's say for example, you have a contract which is valid for one year. At the beginning of the year itself, your billing will be created. Okay, and the entire amount of one year will go and sit into deferred revenue account. And every period end, you will execute the revenue recognition uh, transaction using transaction code VF44 and what will happen is that particular amount which is sitting in the deferred revenue the calculation will be done for a particular period and that amount will be uh, transferred from deferred revenue to actual revenue account okay so every monthly same amount which means divided by 12 will go from deferred revenue and it will sit into the actual revenue account. So at the end of the year, your deferred revenue account will become zero and whatever amount was booked under deferred revenue will be transferred completely to the actual revenue account at the end of the contract. Okay, and second is with billing cycle, which means there is no single billing. Billing is also happening, let's say, every quarterly or even every monthly okay so in that case what will happen let's take example of quarterly we have seen this example of this contract which is built quarterly which means your contract is valid for one year but you are not creating the entire billing at once you are doing the billing in four different quarters okay and at the beginning of each quarter which means today if i'm starting the contract my first billing will be created for next three months okay and what will happen in that case the deferred revenue will be booked only for next three months not for entire 12 months because again after three months we will create another billing third quarter again the third billing and fourth quarter again the fourth billing so that is the concept of billing cycle where again the deferred revenue will come into the picture but deferred revenue will be only for the part for which the billing is already created okay so we've seen this examples practically in the system we have seen this contracts how they are created what are the uh, different fields which are important in the contract and we were not able to complete this particular scenario in our last session so i'll talk about this scenario first 
and then there is as I told you there are more scenarios which I'll keep on adding here so that to keep a track of what exactly we need to understand in SAP RAR okay so let's proceed with this scenario now okay which is scenario number three let me copy this contract which are already created in the system I will copy this and go to VA43 which means the display contract transaction code okay so this is our contract and we can see this is the item within the contract which is using WVN as the item category if you remember last week sorry yeah last session we discussed about this item category okay and how this item category gets determined it it is getting determined based on the sales order type which is SC here and the normal sorry item category group which is mentioned in this material master okay so based on the combination of order type and item category group maintained in the service master data system will pick what will be the corresponding item category and this combination is defined in the configuration okay so once the item category has been determined based on this item category system is going to behave so if you see here this item category wvn is relevant for billing billing plan okay and you can see this is the same example where the billing is done every quarterly so total sales value of this contract is 1200 okay which will be definitely divided into 12 parts so 100 per month but the billing we are not doing entire billing of 1200 at once we are dividing this billing into quarterly bills and the only difference if I open VA 43 again here and if I go with this billing cycle which we already seen okay this is also using WVN if I double click on this this is also having the billing plan but what is the difference here is if you compare this to you can see the start date and end date so what is happening is for the period from 1st of July 2012 to 30th of September 2012 which means three months the billing is done at the end of this quarter okay in this contract there are four billings but the billing is done at the end of every quarter not at the beginning of every quarter if you see this for the period of 1st July 2012 to 30th September 2012 what is happening is the billing is done at the beginning of the contract beginning of the quarter sorry okay so when the billing is done first what will happen whenever you do the billing first it will get booked as deferred revenue right when you do the billing first the amount and go and sit into the deferred revenue account but whenever you do the revenue recognition first because if you see this example what is going to happen here at the end of first month at the end of july that is 31st of july 2012 whenever a revenue recognition will be booked this will be actual revenue so revenue account will be credited what will be debited because we have still not created the billing document billing document will be only created at the end of the quarter that is the reason there will be new account called as unbilled receivables account which will come into the picture okay so that is the reason if you see this what is happening is unbilled receivable accounts is coming into the picture because we are doing the billing only at the quarter end okay so what will happen we have the accounting entries also here uh, let me see which one
have you written here so scenario one is billing billing is done in advance billing is done at the end of the contract but revenue is recognized at the end of every period so you can see this example what is happening is revenue is getting recognized at the end of the month but what is happening here is it is going into the unbilled receivables why because the actual billing will be done later and whenever the billing will be done then actual customer account will be debited and whatever amount was collected in unbilled receivables that will get credit so ultimately irrespective of whether you are using a deferred revenue account or you are using the unbilled receivable account at the end of the contract you will find all these amounts are getting nullified and actual accounting entry which will still remain is your revenue account will be credited and your customer account will be debit. Goro, hey, one question. Yes. This unbuilt receivable is uh, the uh, RAR terminology or it is uh, old SD re revenue recognition term terminology? Okay, see Naren, what we are following is this is just our third session, right? And okay. uh, yeah, and what I'm going to do here is I'm still not talking anything about SAP RAR. I'm oh, just sorry. creating the sorry. no no sorry. no problem just for your information. So we are just uh, creating the ground of uh, understanding why SAP RAR is required at first place. So uh, we are like almost reached there. We already seen what kind of scenarios can come in the real uh, environment. We have seen these are the different scenarios and how they were handled in SAP ECC and using the current SD revenue recognition functionality. Now coming to your question, whether this terminology of unbuilt receivable and deferred revenue is a term. I, I got it. I got it. I, I was under the uh, wrong information. This is my first session. So no problem. No problem. I was so yeah just just to answer so your question, gonna, I have this a terminology question. yeah just one minute this terminology what we are talking about unbuilt receivable and deferred revenue this is applicable to both so even if you go to rar also still there will be unbuilt receivable still the time you are not billing to the customer okay yes uh, ramakrishna go ahead with your question yeah so uh, my question is uh, how are we how how are we deciding that the billing happens at the beginning of the month or end of the month is it just a manual record that we maintain or uh, is there any conflict that we can do for this beginning of the month end of the month yes 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 i am coming to it okay, okay. so if you see basically we, the item category that we are using is same right we are using this wvn in both the cases okay but if you see this Periodic billing is okay, but this option if you see Z3 and Z4, this is the only difference and definitely this is coming from the configuration. Right, so what is happening is whenever we are saying Z3, it means this is the quarterly billing obviously, but it is done at the end of the month or you can say at the end of the uh, end of the quarter. Right, if I show you the list of available options here. Uh, there is some background noise thank you so if you see this list of available options you can create the uh, monthly billing which means monthly at the end of the month monthly at the first of the month only monthly means by default it will go to the first of the month yearly at the first of the year quarterly end of the month which we are using here z3 and z4 which is beginning of the month so what is happening is based on what you define here system is calculating what will be the billing date and then the appropriate amount okay so and this z3 z3 is assigned to the item category uh z3 is not assigned to the item category by default uh, either z3 or z4 is assigned to the item category but yes whenever you are creating the contract you have the option to change this or maybe you can create two copies of item category one with uh, z let's say wv1 and second z wv2 which means v1 will be defaulted to z3 and v2 will be defaulted to z4 but this is something which is done manually in this contract okay but yes it is possible to derive it automatically so if, for that i need to assign this to the item category is that right yes yes correct for this you need to assign it to the item category what exactly you want to uh, assign yeah. Can you show us how where to do yes, it? Yes, yes. 
as I'll show you. Okay, so what is happening here is since we are saying that we are going to go with this quarterly billing at the end of the month That is the reason even if you see this indicator. This is not ticked in advance means for the Quarter you are going to bill at the beginning of the quarter, which means in advance all the Billing document that you are creating is for the entire quarter, but it is in advance. Okay, so if you see here This is ticked Okay, so this option of uh, determining the billing plan type and this when exactly are you going to billing it is defined at the uh, At the item category level Okay, and based on that system will define When the billing has to be carried out Okay, and the amount is you can see it is a proportionate amount Okay, so only in case when you are doing the billing later and you are recognizing the revenue first in that case only this unbilled receivable accounts will come into the picture Unbilled receivable accounts will not come into the picture when you are already doing the billing in that case deferred revenue so if you ask me the question for a particular item in the contract is there any possibility of or is there any scenario in which both deferred revenue and unbilled receivable will come into the picture the answer would be no in a particular item either the deferred revenue will come or unbilled receivable and the answer is also very simple if you are doing the billing before revenue recognition in that case only deferred revenue will come into the picture if you are doing billing after the revenue recognition then definitely unbilled receivables will come into the picture deferred revenue will not come okay and i already shown you where exactly this accounts are maintained maybe i'll just go through once again with the configuration that we discussed so let me go to spro okay so there are some questions on the chat screen from rohit let me talk about that yeah rohit is asking can i give some other date instead of first for billing and second question is can i change the date of billing once given see whenever you are creating the contract there is an option by by default system will propose something but if you are not happy with that proposal definitely you can go and change according to your requirements okay so based on what you are defining there system will calculate the amount okay so it may happen that uh, your dates are different and based on that date system will calculate how much amount should be billed and how much amount should be recognized okay so let me show you here in img so all the settings relevant to sd revenue recognition will come under sales and distribution basic functions and you have this account assignment and costing here there is a separate folder for revenue recognition so the first one is set revenue recognition for item category where you specify at the item category level whether it is relevant for revenue recognition functionality or not so if i go for wvn and if you double click here so you can see this is related to revenue recognition functionality and it is related to time based revenue recognition if you remember i told you there is time based time related revenue recognition and then there is second one which is service related revenue recognition so the next uh, scenario that we are going to talk about the fifth scenario we will be able to understand what is service related revenue recognition okay and this is from where the system is identifying the start date okay so from which date your contract uh, should be started so you can see one is not relevant obviously if this item category is not relevant for revenue recognition if this is blank this will be also blank second is proposal based on contract start date so the billing plan or uh, the revenue recognition will start from the start of the contract that okay if you go with this a option this means whatever is your contract start date your re revenue recognition will start from that particular date and second b1 is proposal based on billing plan start date if you are going for billing plan this is only applicable 
if a particular item category is relevant for billing plan okay so if this item category wb wvn has a billing plan activated in that case only you will go with option b in which based on the billing plan your dates will be uh, started the start date will be picked based on the billing plan started okay now how this wbn will know whether this is relevant to billing plan or not that is if you remember i shown you from the again from the configuration let me go there spro img sales and distribution sales sales documents these are the items and these are the item categories let's go through this wvn can you see this 02 what do you mean by 02 02 means period sorry this is periodic billing but this billing site billing plan type will only come if you are selecting the billing relevance as billing plan so if you see this i this is order relevant billing and it is based on the billing plan and that is the reason billing plan is coming into the picture whenever we are using item category w v n okay let me go back here now so revenue distribution how it will be done whether it is a linearly distributed or it is a related to billing plan maybe this we will see later on in detail but if it is blank then definitely the distribution will be equal it will be linear distribution so whatever is available for a particular year it will be divided by 12 and accordingly the amount will be distributed now coming to ramakrishna's question where exactly are the this particular thing is maintained billing plan type 02 uh, let me go to billing plan type configuration i think the default thing is maintained over there this conference will now be recorded uh, Krishna, I'm already recording, so even if you don't record, that is fine. Okay, sir. Okay, let me check this. Uh, where exactly this is maintained? I'm not sure at this point of time, but yes, this is, can be defaulted and this can be different for different item categories. So maybe in tomorrow's session, I will confirm on this okay. where exactly this is maintained. Okay, any questions till now? Okay, now let me. Now. Yes, Ramakrishna. Uh, I was disconnected suddenly for the last five minutes. So, you know, if, you, if you have some time, then you can put the translation or as soon as the recording. Okay, okay, okay. No problem, no problem. I was just uh, doing the configuration. Uh, Ramakrishna, just mute yourself because there is some background noise. Yeah, so your question from where where exactly in the configuration this Z3 and Z4 is maintained uh, I'm not able to see in this Configurations that we have seen till now, but I will come back to you on this tomorrow But I was just explaining the configuration that we already seen in our last session, which means if I want to uh, First I shown you This one. Yes, so based on the item category how system is able to know whether this is relevant to revenue recognition or not that is maintained here and second this is a place where we are maintaining whether this particular item category is relevant for billing plan or not okay so only this two I explained uh, in the meantime when you were getting some network issues so yes so we are just left with 
understanding where this e3 is coming from so i'll explain you tomorrow yes lokesh the question yeah dharo uh, 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 what do you mean by the start date and end date uh, 02 and 09 is there any specific uh, logic is behind on this you are saying this one yeah yeah so question is from where this start date has been determined okay so how system has determined that my billing will start from 1st of july 2012 and it will end at 30th june 2013 so this can be either manually entered okay or it can be picked automatically from the contract so you can see here whenever we created the contract at the header level we mentioned this dates that the contract is starting from this date and ending at this date and if we want the same to be copied into our billing plan then we are going with this option so you can see 02 means it is taking the contract start date and 09 means it is taking the contract end dates which means the values in the start date and end date are coming from contract data um guru uh, for this z3 uh, can you please uh, f1 uh, so that we can go from configuration from f1 Yes, yes, yes. F four or F one? F one, F one. Okay. Yes. Uh, can we go to? No, this, configuration. Uh, configuration is not available from here. So that's that's exactly what I say. Instead, you there is a configuration, but instead no, of no, here, from here we can go. I think go to X X X three Z three F one. F one again. Okay. बिलिंग ओके Yeah, you can come down. Okay, Q one and yeah, Z three and Z four. No, but this is this is where you maintain what will happen. But how the Z three is determined, whether it will be Z three or Z four. Oh, automatically. Yeah, that will come in the item category, right? That will come in the settings of. Yeah, that will be that will be assigned the item category. Yeah, yeah. exactly. If you so, want. Uh, automatically, uh, that will be assignment of item. Maybe assign billing plan. Okay, let's see here. So, item category W V N. Okay, this is only showing the information that we already know, but Z three and Z four is still not available here. Uh, date categories. Let's see. I'll see this last one. Otherwise, I'll come with the firm answer. Yeah, yeah no problem. so billing plan type we are using as second one uh, no even not here okay kyle i'll come back to you on that let me just come out of this now okay so let's go to the next scenario now i'll enter the fifth scenario here and then we are ready for uh, understanding what are the challenges in the current sap sd revenue recognition functionality because of which there are some new rules created from ifrs 15 and this new rules why they are not uh, com compatible with the existing sd revenue recognition functionality because of which sap came up with sap rr Okay, so let's talk about the fifth scenario first. Now, whatever scenarios we have seen till now, they were all related to the periodic revenue recognition, right? So we created the contract. The contract is valid for one year, and then we distributed the equal amount over the periods. Okay, over the twelve periods. But now, let's say it is not periodic. It depends upon percentage completion. If you remember, I told you earlier also. percentage completion method 
okay so which means the contract is created okay but it is not necessary that every monthly we will be booking the same amount it depends upon how much work we completed okay so it may happen that you are booking the revenue of 10 percent in the first month in the second month it is only six percent in the third month again you catch up the speed and you are recognizing 15 percent so it depends upon how much work you are completing for a particular project okay and normally this percentage completion method is tightly integrated with project systems okay so there is a you must be knowing there is a module in sap called as project systems so what you do is whenever let's take an example it will be better so let's say you got a project in which uh, you need to uh, complete the construction of the building okay and you realized that the plan time for this construction will be one year okay and at the end of one year you are expecting that this building will be completed so in order to book the revenue for the uh, for this particular construction every monthly you will check how much percentage of building construction has been completed so let me enter this values here so let's say at the end of month one you completed if i exactly divide this amount so which will come to hundred divided by let's say you are able to complete in 10 months instead of 12 months 10 months so it will be easier for us to calculate so there are m1 m2 m3 m4 5 let me copy this so 6 7 8 9 and 10 okay so at the end of every month you realized that only eight percent was completed at the end of second month eleven percent so consolidated or cumulative is nineteen percent at the end of let me enter the cumulative so nineteen here you completed twenty five here you completed thirty eight forty two fifty 63 78 91 and finally 10th month you completed entire 100 percent so what will happen is in this particular case revenue will be recognized and normally if i go with percentage completion method even billing is monthly and billing is dependent upon the revenue recognized okay which means based on how much percentage you completed first you will recognize the revenue which means you will book revenue credit and unbilled receivables account debit and immediately you will create a billing to the customer for the completed percentage which means immediately unbilled receivables will be cleared and the actual customer account will be debited okay so it depends upon the billing cycle forget about that but this is important so the question is in case of periodic system was automatically calculating how much should be the revenue for each month because it was just the calculation divided by 12 but here how the system will know that how much work you actually completed in order for system to know how much work is completed you need to have some setup in project system normally we use project system okay so we will create a pro project in the project system module and based on whatever activities you completed in the project system will automatically fetch the data from project system into sd and it will know okay whether the 
eight percent has been completed or 19 percent has been completed and this transfer of data from ps to sd is done via result key okay so what is the purpose of result key to calculate the percentage completion and how this result key work it you can define your logics okay so i'll give you two examples how system will know whether it is 8% or 19% it can be based on planned cost okay i'll give you this both, both examples so method 1 is planned cost versus actual cost okay so total plant cost of project it's equal to 1000 usd so at the end of m1 800 or i think 80 yes 80 usd has been all already incurred actual cost at the end of month one is 80 usd so what will happen automatically system will divide this 80 by 1000 and it will realize that okay eight percent work has been completed okay so this is based on this is a method which is based on plant cost versus actual cost there can be also method two which is based on time so method two which is based on time so planned time vis-a-vis -vis actual time now this time normally should not be in terms of months because if it is in the months then obviously it will be divided into 12 so this time normally is based on hours so total planned hours of the project let's say is 1000 man hours okay and at the end of m1 you realized that 80 hours work has been already booked on this particular project so based on that system will determine that yes 8% work has been completed okay so in short these calculations are based on result key and this result key is assigned to the project definition in ps so you create a project you assign the result key at the end of the month you calculate how much percentage has been completed based on the method that you defined in the result key and whatever calculation has been done here once project system has determined that eight percent work has been completed this eight percent has to be transferred as a value to sales and distribution based on which the revenue recognition will be performed in the normal revenue recognition functionality okay so this percentage completion normally is it is integrated with project system okay so i don't have any example to show you now in the existing functionality but i will definitely show you this one in rar okay so in short now i hope you understood what is the purpose of revenue recognition functionality so whenever you are booking the revenue at the time of billing you don't need any kind of revenue recognition tool to identify what will be the revenue for my period okay but in the case when there is a difference when you are booking the billing and your revenue recognition at different stages okay different time intervals in that case you need a revenue recognition functionality so one is this time based revenue which means you divide the entire contract period into multiple accounting periods and book the revenue second is you divide the contract into percentage completion which means you define based on the percentage completion you are going to book the revenue okay billing again if you are doing the billing first and then the revenue then that amount of revenue will be booked under deferred revenue account if you are booking the revenue before billing then that amount will not go to the customer account till the time you are not creating the billing it will lie in unbilled receivable 
account okay just one more thing in the configuration i think i have not told this till now i already shown you where the deferred revenue account is set up so i'll go to img again sales and distribution same folder that we seen basic functions account assignment and costing revenue recognition and this one we already seen so which item category is relevant for revenue recognition so if you go for wvn we know that this is relevant for revenue recognition functionality okay so this is a place where we specify it if you go with the standard items which we normally use in any sales order like tan which is a normal uh, standard item category you can see it is a standard item you will not find revenue recognition at all this means the revenue and billing are done at the same time there is no time difference between revenue recognition and creation of billing document okay so if you go back once again and let's talk about these two things maintain account determination so there are two steps here as i told you in this entire scenario we seen there are two important accounts deferred revenue account and unbilled receivable account if you have question in the mind what about this accounts where exactly the customer account will come into the picture where exactly this customer account is maintained and where exactly this revenue account is maintained so customer account always comes from the customer master data there is no separate configuration to define the customer account the gl account which will be booked at the time of billing this gl account will get picked from customer master in the customer master under financial uh, role there is a field called as reconciliation account so that reconciliation account will be picked automatically there is no configuration to determine this customer account so let's talk about this three accounts now where exactly this revenue account will come into the picture how the default revenue will be uh, determined and finally how this unbilled receivable account is determined so all these three things are determined or can be determined using these two options so let's go for the first one assign gl uh, accounts yes yeah sorry uh, Gaurav. Uh, can you please uh, uh, give uh, example of uh, scenario 5 because you know i may not be able to figure out the difference uh, uh, between sd how revenue uh, is recognized in sd and uh, rar so it will be great if you can please uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll make sure. Sure, sure, sure. I'll, I'll do that. Yeah. Okay. So now, once we are here, in this one, you can determine. This is VKOA. If you are already coming from SD or FI background, you must be knowing this transaction VKOA, which is the integration of SD with FI. Which means whenever you book any transaction, whenever you are creating the billing document in sales and distribution, system automatically generates the accounting entry customer account debit as i told you customer account debit will come from the reconciliation account maintained in the master data of the customer to a revenue account and this revenue account is maintained in this configuration okay so you can determine the revenue account based on multiple combinations so you can go with the first combination where you will say okay if the customer group is this material group is this account key is this then i want this particular revenue account in the second one you will say okay i don't need to worry about material group i can just just take these two things customer account group and account key accordingly select the revenue account third one you are not worried about what is the customer group you are just worried about material group and account key okay so what system does is it will follow this particular sequence it will go in this configuration first it will check if these two accounts are provided or not if they are provided then it will stop here itself it will determine the gl account if not it will go to the next combination if not it will go to the third if not it will go to the fourth and finally if nothing is available here it will go here and even if 
it is not available here then definitely system will throw error that revenue account has not been maintained for this combination for this particular material right so any transaction or any sequence when you double click on any particular activity here it will ask you for two accounts gl account and provision account this gl account is revenue account and this provision account is deferred revenue account okay so for example in our combination let me click on position see application will be always v let's see what is v sorry i was looking for description but it is not available okay so let's go with v condition type is always going to be kofi chart of accounts it depends upon your enterprise structure so if i go for OBY6. OBY6 is a transaction for global parameters of company code. So our company code that we are continuously using is 3000. You can see this company code 3000 is assigned to chart of account CAUS. So here we have to specify application V, condition type KOFI, chart of account C. AUS sales organization is 3000 okay and if if you want to provide this account assignment group material account group account key then it will come but normally for revenue the account key is ERL so if you see this ERL what is happening revenue account can be determined from here itself but deferred revenue account is not defined here for ERL Okay, these are different account keys based on your different conditions. The normal revenue is booked in ERL. So what is happening is normal revenue account combination is maintained here. But if we talk about the deferred revenue account that is not maintained here. So in that case, whenever a system is looking for revenue account, it will pick it from here. It will not go to the next combination. But if it is looking for deferred revenue account, definitely in this line it will not be able to identify and that is the reason it has to go for the next combination so again in the next combination he will enter the same things only thing is there will be one lesser field here there will not be any material group so we Kofi chart of account CAUS sales organization 3000 and here also system is not able to determine the Deferred revenue account. So revenue account is available, but there is no deferred revenue account. Again, it will go for the next combination. So again, this V chart of account CAUS and this 3000. So again, for ERL, no deferred revenue account. Go to the next combination. Here also there is no deferred revenue account and the last one is this one so if there is no revenue account defined here if you try to create a new document it is definitely going to give you the error okay but here you can see this is the deferred revenue account which is already defined okay so if I remove this definitely system will not be able to understand what will be the deferred account okay so what you understood in this configuration is from where the revenue account will come into the picture from where the deferred revenue account will come into the picture so customer you already understood customer is coming from the customer master data now only the remaining gl account that will be required in case of revenue recognition is unbuilt receivables and that is not defined here Unbuilt receivables you cannot define using this first option. There is a second 
activity assign accounts for unbilled receivables and cost so if you double click on this this is where you are going to determine the revenue account so you can see there are not much of combinations here so application is v chart of account is caus this is the unbilled receivable account and it is coming based on the reconciliation account what is the reconciliation account reconciliation account is nothing but customer account okay as i told you in customer master there is a gl account assigned so if i talk about this particular customer which is mentioned in this particular contract okay this is the sold to party okay let me go for xt or fd03 for 3800 and company code 3000 okay if i go to company code information this is the reconciliation account okay so what we are telling the system is if the reconciliation account is this then instead of booking the amount here book in unbilled receivables till the time billing is not completed okay so this is the place from where the fourth gl account is coming into the picture okay now i hope whatever scenarios we have seen till now apart from this ps scenario all the scenarios which are coming from sd perspective you know where exactly the configuration is maintained how system is determining the item category of a particular item how based on the item category system is determining whether it is relevant to uh, the periodic based billing or it is there is a billing plan or not all those things are coming from there and finally whenever you are trying to post the documents either the billing document or uh, the revenue account document how system is determining the gl accounts clear on this now let me once again as uh, rohit said he wants some more clarification on this so see uh, currently all other scenarios i shown you in the system and that is the reason i think you are more comfortable this scenario is not present in the system and it is also not very straightforward to create this scenario because i need to first create the ps structure i need to create some project and accordingly i need to generate the uh, cost for this uh, percentage completion i need to execute the settlement which means whatever amount will be determined here it will go back and hit into the sd module okay so again i will just explain you what exactly the purpose of this but you will get the clearer picture when we will see this particular scenario practically in sap rar okay but if your question is how this is different in sap rar i will try to clarify that now okay so just quick recap in five minutes what is this fifth scenario See, in the fifth scenario, we are saying normally, whenever you are creating the billing and your revenue recognition, if they are not, if there is no time difference between them, then there is no question of having the separate billing document and revenue recognition. At the same time, whenever you create a billing document, revenue is booked. Okay, but in the scenarios, when it is not true because you are booking the revenue in advance or you are booking sorry you are creating the billing document in advance for multiple months or your revenue recognition is monthly but you are creating the billing document at the end of quarter or at the end of year in that case these two activities have to be carried out separately okay so the first option is if you are carrying out these activities separately you divide the entire contract amount into equal number of installments so if you have 12 installments you will divide it by 12 if you have four installments you will divide it by four okay so that will be the 
calculated amount that will be the amount which is getting divided by the contract term but if it is service based which means your revenue is not dependent on how many months you completed your revenue is dependent on how much work you have completed okay so in that case how will you track the work how much work you completed there needs to be some mechanism in the system where this work is being calculated and normally in order to calculate this kind of work we use ps system project systems okay in the project system as soon as the sales order is created we will also create a corresponding project okay and we will set up the system in such a way that whenever we are doing any particular activity in the project system at the month end it is reporting back to sd telling the sd what is what has been completed till now okay so what will happen in order to set up those in the project system we need to maintain lot of configurations the ra keys and all and based on the ra keys we can define whether we want to implement method 1 or method 2 based on that system will estimate or determine what is the total percentage completed for a particular project accordingly it will send the data back to sd and based on that revenue recognition functionality will determine this as percentage complete and it will recognize that particular revenue if the billing is already completed it will go for revenue to default revenue account if the billing is not completed it will go from revenue to unbilled receivable account based on the combination that we just maintained okay now if your question is how this is different in rar no need to worry at this point of time because even we are not discussed how these transactions are different in rar so my focus currently is to make you understand what are the different kind of scenarios that you execute during the revenue recognition how the scenarios were handled in sap sd revenue recognition once you understand that my next thing which i'm going to start now we have some time now 10 15 minutes so i will start with giving you the scenarios where you will understand that yes these kind of scenarios cannot be configured or achieved using as using as the revenue recognition and then tomorrow i will give you the complete uh, description of how this things will be handled in sap area so tomorrow will be just kind of overview to sap area without going into much of practicals we will try to understand what needs to be done what are the different steps to recognize the revenue and then for each and every step we need to understand what configuration will be used what master data will be used and what transactions will be used okay right so is this sufficient for this particular scenario now percentage completion yeah yeah thank thanks goro thank you okay so any questions in understanding of whatever we have discussed till now so that i can go to the next part now okay if not let me go to the next thing now i'll give you one or two scenarios and you need to tell me what do you think how this will be handled in revenue recognition okay so these are practical scenarios now industry specific scenarios okay so let's take the telecommunication industry okay transaction number 1 company sells mobile device at 5000 dollar can you tell me the revenue treatment of this whether this, this revenue will be, will be uh, uh, yes, this will be upfront uh, revenue with the 5000 dollars 
so you mean to say scenario number if i if i talk from this scenarios so 1 2 3 4 5 which one is applicable which one is applicable uh revenue uh, scenario 4 i think scenario 4 yes revenue at the time of billing so what will happen here is revenue will be booked at the time of billing no time difference okay and hence no need of revenue recognition technique okay second question is what will be the accounting entry so company sales mobile device at 5000 dollar to customer a so, so yeah. it will be customer a debit uh, and sales uh, and customer a will be debit a will be debit I'll just mute yourself yep customer a will be debit and actual revenue account actual revenue. will be credit okay from where the system will pick the customer gl account from the customer master from where the system will pick the revenue credit account revenue account it will be from vko settings which we just seen okay so very straight forward let's say the same company okay and let's talk about company sales mobile device let me enter in the bracket model number 12345 okay this is just for example because it will help in our next scenario um your i just have a question on this one yeah um, why should we book revenue only at the time of billing what if we are booking the revenue at the time of sales order itself no as i told you whenever we are talking about whenever we are talking about calls Uh, Ramakrishna, please mute yourself. Please mute yourself. Yeah. Whenever we are talking about the goods, whenever we are uh, providing the goods to the customer, the minimum requirement to recognize the revenue is transfer of goods has been, or the ownership of the goods has been transferred to the customer. Okay, and that is the reason if you go through the normal sales order process. you create a sales order you create a delivery for that sales order and then you create a billing and billing is only done after the delivery so normally this kind of scenario will follow delivery based revenue recognition which means your revenue will be only recognized when the delivery has been completed clear on this yeah thanks so in short there is no scenario in sap system where the revenue will be booked at the time of sales order itself definitely not you have to see not revenue will be only booked when the service will be booked when the service will be no no we are doing it uh, for a software company when they sell the license as well as uh, you know uh, contract the license amount is booked immediately at the time of sales order and uh, at that time it sits in the unbilled revenue and once i create the invoice it's it goes to the billed revenue so we have a mechanism where we really book the revenue at the sales order level so maybe maybe it's a unique case you, you can go ahead and i, I can discuss the uh, offline if any okay can you mute yourself yeah sure yeah see you are saying when you book the sales order at that time itself the revenue is booked i think there is definitely something missing here you might be uh, saying that you created some kind of uh, scenario in which as soon as you create a sales order the revenue is booked at least for the current month that is possible but if you are talking about the revenue recognition for the entire term of that license definitely not because that is against the rules then right because we are discussing same and same thing that revenue will be recognized only when the services has been rendered or the goods have been delivered to the customer so when you create a sales order it just mean that yes we need to deliver this good or we need to 
render this particular service but till the time we are not doing that actually it is not supposed to we are not supposed to book the revenue okay so just check uh, why exactly you are doing that it might be only for the current month because whenever you are creating the sales order it may be possible that anyways you need to book the revenue at the end of the month so that can be booked because it will show in the reporting of your current month only okay so we'll talk about that so let's go to the next one now next one is same company voice plan for three hundred dollars per month okay so company is selling the voice plan let's say the voice plan again voice plan number is one two three what will be the treatment revenue treatment for this <clears throat> and let's say i'm adding to this billing done at the beginning of period so every period the billing is done billing is done every monthly normally whenever you go for any data plans any mobile plans you normally get a bill per month and this bill is normally advanced bill which means as soon as the month is started they will send you the bill to enjoy the service for next one month what will happen in that case even in this case it will be a, a same as number one uh, no, no, because we are building it every month and it's every month there's no contract so it should be like customer a debit revenue credit okay so here there are two options okay i'll not say you are wrong you are also correct because anyways if i am booking the um, revenue at the beginning of the month that is the revenue that i generated in this month itself even though i am liable to book it on the 30th of month but still the revenue belongs to that particular month right so i can go for correct. customer debit to revenue credit or i can also go for customer debit to uh, deferred revenue on the first of the month and at the 30th of month again i will book deferred revenue to revenue so both the options are open because all the transactions are happening in the same period so i'll go with the same one as you said but garo uh, you not specified any start date and end date right so it is open contract only right so no, normally say... see normally when we say monthly it is from the start of the month to the end of the month because i'm saying this is for the particular period or single period per month see yeah, so we having uh, see in the telecommunication we having a postpaid and prepaid so we will treat postpaid in a different format and prepaid as a different format um if we if we go for prepaid uh, mm -hmm. either the customer can recharge the revenue for the particular month or may not both are possible right but in prepaid definitely the the company will recognize the revenue so yes if the company recognizes the revenue definitely there will be a start date and end date okay so let's do this as prepaid to avoid the confusion this is prepaid voice okay. plan for which you need you getting the bill first you are paying the amount and then you are enjoying the service for next one month yeah you are right if you are going with postpaid then definitely the billing cannot be done first billing will be done based on how much uh, utilization you have done or how much use have you consumption have you done from the voice plan okay so let's keep it simple this is a prepaid now let's come to the third scenario okay i'm keeping it simple company sales or company has came with, came with promotional option what is the promotion if you buy plan voice plan 123 for next one year 
or let's say next two years whatever it is get mobile device at only one dollar okay so if you buy the voice plan one two three for next two years mobile device will be provided to you at only one dollar okay again this is just an example so what do you think in this case definitely when you create a sales contract how many lines will be there let's say the start date is 1st of july 2018 and end date is 30th of june 2020 right the plan is valid for next two years so sales contract will be created from 1st of july to 30th of june 2020 okay and let's say the billing uh, is done at the beginning of the period at the beginning of the contract so billing date first july 2018 there is no billing plan single bill for entire two years okay and definitely in the sales contract there will be item number one which is nothing but mobile device at one dollar and item two which will be voice plan at if you calculate this 3000 7200 right so this will be 7200 dollar okay so there are two items what do you think what will be the treatment of item number one Are you there? Item number one is like they are selling the mobile. So that should, that should, we should build it immediately for that. Okay. So item number one. Yes. Follow scenario four. If you go up, which means a revenue at the time of billing. Okay, but how much revenue? How much revenue will be good? One dollar. One dollar, is it correct? One dollar or yes. five thousand dollar? No, we talking about item number one, so it should be one dollar only right okay so this mobile device we are giving on one dollar because customer is purchasing the voice plan for seven thousand two hundred but otherwise if this item is sold it is being sold at five thousand dollars okay so what do you think we'll be recognizing the revenue only one dollar or we should recognize the revenue as five thousand dollar See, any of that five thousand dollars has been included in a voice plan. Seven thousand dollars is okay. So no customer will pay voice plan for two years for seven thousand two hundred. Any of the device amount is already included in item two. Okay. So again, we believe. Yeah, again we believe those five thousand dollars in item number one will the customer will not uh, accept on them. Right. Maybe I can it's only yeah. conditional, right? Yeah, at least if you continue the contract, you get all the five thousand back from the customer. Mm -hmm. In case okay. he discontinues the contract at some time, he has to pay the five thousand. So it's not that one dollar revenue. Okay. Five thousand and in some temporary account, 
and once he completes the contract then it should be written off from there see on customer point of view we need to bill one dollar but in the internal point of view uh, if we want to show revenue in a different way then the item number one can be five thousand dollars so it's only an internal purpose not for a customer level okay so anybody who has worked on sd revenue recognition in sap ecc anyone who already has some experience yeah. into yeah so I what, work yeah what do you think then in that case if i'm forget about the rules forget about the treatment of the accounts forget about ifrs gap if i'm creating this sales order or if i'm creating this sales contract in the mm -hmm. standard sap system how much revenue will be booked um so the revenue will be booked um 7200 as a deferred revenue no doubt on that no 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 i'm talking about line number 1 line number one for me it we need to use a different item category a normal item category and it will be a customer a debit revenue premium. no no account accounting entries i'm not asking i'm asking you how much revenue which amount it will be one dollar one dollar yes yes that is exactly what i want to hear so yeah. what happens in current sd revenue recognition or whatever the rules Claiming coming from gap and IFRS currently. I'm not talking about IFRS 15 It is based on at what price you are selling a particular material Okay, but as we discussed and th this was a good discussion Lokesh and uh, uh, Who was the other one? Yeah, uh, it was a good discussion So what we understood is although we are booking this as one dollar, but this is not giving us right picture because we are selling the voice plan at 7200 and definitely in the company who is selling this data plan definitely they might have some cost associated with the mobile device so maybe they divided internally into 4200 and 3000 definitely the cost is not one dollar right they, they will incur a huge loss if they go for one dollar billing for a particular uh, mobile device so whatever is the logic whatever logic they determined maybe 4200 as a service 3000 as a device or maybe uh, 5000 as a service and 2200 as a device whatever it is so there has to be some calculation which they have performed internally and based on that they derived the total price of the contract not the price of this uh, first item the overall price of the contract so Currently, if you go with normal SD revenue recognition or if you go with normal gaps and IFRS, it was perfectly fine to book this amount as $1. Okay, because you have two items in the sales contract. The first item value you already mentioned that it is only $1. So $1 can be booked as the revenue. Okay, but now as far as IFRS 15, in IFRS 15, the revenue has to be booked based on standalone selling price. Okay, so this terminology, standalone selling price, is making the lot of changes. What is standalone selling price? So I am selling this mobile device at only one dollar. But what is actual standalone selling price of this mobile device? If I am selling only mobile device, how much will I get? I will get five thousand dollars. So this is a standalone selling price of this mobile and based on this standalone selling price we need to find out the proportionate value okay i'll tell you what is proportionate value what is standalone selling price we will continue this same uh, example in tomorrow's session to understand how ifrs 15 is different okay so now the grounds are clear i think all of you are able to understand that if, if I'm going with this combination of two lines at the same time, how it will impact the rules which are uh, provided by FRS 15. So I cannot just go ahead and book this $1 as my revenue, which is completely wrong. It is not complying to IFRS 15. IFRS 15 has some new requirements in which you have to book the billing as per the proportionate value. So what exactly is proportionate value? How to determine the standalone selling price? Because 
when we create a sales contract are we entering the stand alone selling price no because in the contract whatever we agreed we agreed only for one dollar so we are just providing one dollar of the uh, revenue but now if i look at ifrs 15 we need to have the standalone ceiling price we need to calculate the proportionate value and finally based on this proportionate value the revenue will be recognized at the month end okay so that complete cycle we will discuss in tomorrow's session i think we are already late today so can we close Garo, for today uh, yes yeah yes. Yeah, Garo, actually in revenue recognition in the current cases here, I don't think we cannot differentiate uh, uh, mobile device value and voice plan. Uh, exactly. If you're booking item two as a 7,200 means, the, the contract value will be considered 7,200 and it will be recognized based on your billing plan. Right. But I don't that think... Is the, that is the challenge yeah. with existing SD revenue recognition and that is the reason the compliance that we need to follow from IFRS 15 perspective, those cannot be achieved using the current SD revenue recognition functionality. And that is the reason we need to understand how RAR is different and how RAR will help us in calculating all these things and automatically posting into the revenue accounts and complying with IFRS 15 norms. Okay. This is a good example actually uh, where we can differentiate mobile device separately and the voice plan. Yes. Different. So different industries have this works. different yeah, different industries have different examples. So this is the example that I gave you for telecommunication industry. So tomorrow when I'll be giving the overview of RAR to you or overview of IFRS 15 to you, we will talk about three, four industries and how uh, this clubbing of material as well as service will impact the way in which the revenue is recognized. Okay. Yeah, Rob, this is Kater. Yes. This may be more uh, yes, very SD question, but when we, the, the actual price of the mobile device is 5,000, right? Mm -hmm. And when we put along with this contract, how the price goes to $1? Basically, they do price over, right? Or just they give a discount for that amount? How, I'm, I'm just asking pricing that. No, this is, see, no, see, first of all, the pricing can be calculated by default. Whatever price you pricing you entered for the particular material. Let's say when you enter that material by default, it will show you 5000 because that is coming from the pricing. But you can definitely go ahead in the sales contract and change that 5000 to one because that is what you agreed with the customer. Yes, so my, my question is more towards like because this is a promotion. Mm -hmm. uh, because this is a promotion going on. We literally not go and change every contract we enter. So is there a way, okay, the promotion is going on so that it happens automatic? That, that is possible? Uh, we have to check. Let, let me check on this. Whether is, is it possible to automatically specify that, yes, this is based on the promotion and it should be booked at one? Yeah, okay. But that's what I said. It's not I, more. Yes, you said the current it came up. I want to ask you. No, no problem. We'll, we'll talk about all these uh, concepts in detail. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Thank you all. Bye. Thanks so much.